Hello, hello everybody. So welcome to one more YCL talk and today uh, it's like uh, in English, international, so we are really happy to be back to some international YCL talk. So and today our uh, topic is opportunities to study and research on the climate agenda in Germany and why Germany. So Germany is one of the main references when we talk about tackling uh, climate change. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, YCL immersion last year was in Germany. We were there uh, for two weeks uh, learning uh, in theory and in a practical way about the cities and climate change. So that's why we have this strong connection and we know how it's a reference. So a lot of fellows from YCL networking are looking for us and asking how they could apply for opportunities in Germany, understanding the importance of the country on this topic. So that's why we decided to do that, but open for anyone else. And so then welcome everyone. Uh, I don't want to extend so much because we have amazing guests. Uh, so then I want to give you the floor today. But uh, uh, before I give the floor to all of these amazing people, uh, so I want you to tell about the program. Uh, first of all, we are going to have a presentation from Mar Marcio Weischer from the VEHA Sao Paulo. Then later on with Miguel Flores from the AAD uh, Brazil. Then we are going to have Adriana Marchiori and Alicia Morin. They are Alexander from Humboldt Foundation Fellows. And later on, Carlos Hitel that is going to talk about uh, uh, researching in EASS in Potsdam. Uh, as we're going to see, all of them have connect, are Brazilians or have connections with Brazil, such as YCL. So YCL has this Brazilian DNA. Uh, this year we have a huge international agenda to do, but uh, because of coronavirus, we decided to concentrate more our activities in Brazil and with Portuguese speaker countries. Um, but so that, that's why we are uh, working really closely with more uh, Brazilian uh, organizations or organizations based in Brazil. But once we realized this topic was so important for the international community, we decided to host that in English uh, for people from abroad to participate as well. But uh, uh, just for you understand why some examples that you are going to watch today uh, are fo not focused, but bring a lot of uh, German-Brazilian cooperation but uh, I think it's valid for any country in the world uh, and anyone that wants and have interest to, to study or research in Germany on the topic of climate change. So uh, say that, I really want to give the floor to Marcio Weischer from the VH. Uh, so Marcio, he's journalist and coordinator of the German Science and Innovation Center, Sao Paulo, the VH. So welcome Marcio and thank you to be here with us. Thank you, Evelyn, and uh, hello, everybody. So I'm Marcio Weichert. I'm the program coordinator of uh, our program manager of the German Center for Research and Innovation in Sao Paulo. So my English is not that good as uh, from, uh, from Evelyn, but uh, I will do my best. So um, I will share with you my presentation. I need... Uh, where is my cursor? So here, need to share a screen. Oh, a lot of questions here. Not working. Are you seeing my presentation? So I don't see you are, now. Yeah, we, we are still not seeing your your, your presentation, but uh, if you want, I can I can uh, share for you, Marcio. Yes, because uh, so my presentation is my screen now, and here it seems to to works. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then uh, interrupt it. I have interrupted. You can then. Yeah, uh, so then I. Uh, nice. Uh, so I'm going to share the screen. So, first time with this app. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that can, can happen. Uh, no worries. So can you see my, my screen now? Yes. 
So nice. So then, but can you the put floor is yours? The... Yes, and I'm going to put in the full screen now. Full screen is better because the letters are too small. So, and I will control my time. So time is then running. So, uh, so I'm, as I said, so I'm the program manager of the German Center for Research and Innovation, Sao Paulo. Uh, next one, Evelyn. So you will don't have time to, to drink water. Uh, so we are uh, a, a network of uh, five uh, DVA highs. So the VH is as we spell our acronym in, in German. That's easier than in English or Portuguese. You need to, to believe me. So the WIH or the WIH is more difficult than the VH. The VH is a word, are not uh, isolated uh, letters. So, uh, so for me, it's too small this slide now. So we, we are five uh, German centers around the world. You can see uh, in the presentation and uh, we are all are under the umbrella from the DAD, the German uh, Academic Exchange uh, Service uh, in Bonn. Uh, have a coordination in Bonn. Uh, next one. So I will be very fast in this first uh, slides to concentrate me in the, the last ones. So in our mission, our core mission is to represent the German scientific community, research and innovation in these five cities. And what we do, so we, we do marketing uh, for Germany as an uh, innovation uh, country, uh, research and innovation country. And we give information and advisory uh, for people that want to study research uh, in Germany or with Germany. We promote uh, uh, the knowledge exchange and uh, building of networks. And yes, and service and constitute is, I, I have already spoken. Next one. Yes, and this uh, 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 some redundance. So, uh, as I said, so we, we try, we, our goals are to give visibility for Germany, exchange of knowledge, uh, and so on, and advise and network. Next one. So, and how we do it. So, uh, we promote our uh, events like the German Brazilian dialogue and other ones. We have in our uh, activity program uh, two uh, competitions, science and pitch uh, competitions for young researchers, the, the Falling Walls Lab, and uh, for startups, um, for German startups that want to come to Brazil. And we support events as well from our supporters from uh, and partners, so associated uh, research institutions from Germany that are linked uh, to the VH. And so you, you can find us as well in other events like SPPC annual meeting in Brazil or FOBI. FOBI is the annual meeting, is the association of the international offices uh, from Brazilian universities. And so in marketing and information advice, I have already spoken as well. So uh, we, we have a lot of, of media for that. So I, I want to emphasize here our next events on the topic of this uh, webinar. So uh, we have next year our 19 uh, German Brazilian dialogue. Uh, this dialogue should be uh, this year in October, but we needed to postpone it to to May next year because of the pandemic, uh, and uh, because we we want uh, to to have it in the presential form and not uh, as uh, online event because of our goal to promote networking between 
the researchers. But uh, we need to discuss now if you will need to to have it in a hybrid form. So you can note the the dates. Next one. Uh, so, uh, in order that uh, we don't stay this year without events to the topic citizen climate, because citizen climate is our um, main topic this year that was decided before the, the pandemic. So, we should have this year three events uh, about uh, citizen climate, and all of them were postponed to next year. So we 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 decided to to have a small talk uh, on the 19th November uh, with the four members of our scientific community of the dialogue. So Leila, Marcus, Nico Caltabiano, and Sabini Schlake. So two from Brazil and two uh, from Germany. So Nico is a Brazilian guy, uh, but uh, he coordinates a German project. Uh, in Hamburg. So, yes, so take note of the date. Uh, I don't remember, but it will be in the morning in Brazil, in the afternoon in Germany. Uh, I think, uh, I, I don't know, you, you need to, to wait uh, for the uh, correct information. Next one. So, and uh, the, our center, so each, each the VH, has uh, some supporters uh, that uh, work together with uh, the center. In our case, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, so we are the, 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 the VIH with the, 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 the biggest, largest number of supporters. So we have a lot of universities that are linked to us uh, directly or by uh, alliances, or by representations, state representations. And we have uh, non-universitary research associations, funding associations, and one organization for study preparation and test development. They are, in the next, in the next uh, slide. So here you can see the full supporters. These organizations, they have uh, own offices and representatives in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. So uh, when we will not be working in uh, in home office, but in our uh, offices, uh, uh, really, so you can find, uh, come to us and have a talk directly, uh, uh, personally with this uh, representative, DAD, DFG, so, and Alexander von Humboldt, they are funding agencies. GAS is this, uh, orga is this organization for study preparation. And Fraunhofer, uh, the biggest or uh, the main European uh, organization for in applied uh, research. And the universities, Freie Universität Berlin, University Potsdam, Technical University Munich, and University of Münster. And the next ones, they are associated supporters that are organizations that are linked to the VH. They work together with us. Uh, we, they can apply uh, for subvention for events and so on, but they don't have uh, representatives in Brazil. So the contacts are normally um, online. Okay. Uh, so you see there are a lot of universities. Next one. Then you see here the both rep, uh, state representations, Baden-Württemberg and Bayern, and uh, three others organization, Max Planck uh, as organization for basic research. Leibniz associations is a very large uh, association with many institutes, research institutes in Germany. And IEF is a organization, a private organization, on of for funding of uh, research projects uh, in between industry and uh, research institutes, not only in Germany but uh, international as well. Next one. Yes, and now uh, I want to, uh, my time is 
almost over. Uh, so I want to, to tell you about possibilities uh, in Germany uh, to study or research uh, about uh, climate, uh, sustainability, uh, ecology, uh, uh, environment, and so on. So uh, I have asked them, so our supporters, about uh, the offers of them. Uh, first of all, I need to say, you can do uh, your PhD in all of these uh, institutions. Uh, we will not uh, go in detail of that, but I will uh, emphasize here uh, the areas that you will find in some of them. So FU Berlin, the Freie Universität Berlin, uh, has a, a score, uh, the research in the area, so studies in research in the area of environment and politics. Okay, the uh, the FU doesn't have um, engineering uh, or the, in, so, uh, studies in engineering area, but in the area of management politics, they are very strong. So in Minster, in the University of Minster, so I, if you are want to study at USP, so USP has a strategical partnership with uh, Minster. And one area of this strategic partnership is on cities and climate. Uh, uh, the Institute for Landscape Ecology in Münster has as well a, co a strong cooperation with the Federal University in Vissosa. If you want to study in Vissosa in this area, you can you have the possibility to go to Münster for a time. And do, uh, to have a study stay there or a research stay. And the uh, other area that is very strong in Minsa is geoinformatics. Uh, they work, this is a very important sector for, for climate, uh, for environment, and so on. Um, so they developed their the sense box. This is a, um, a device uh, that we have in Brazil as well. I have here at home and at the VH as well to mass uh, to mass uh, some dates about pollution uh, and climate and they this information go to a network you can check online this information and it's uh, uh, I, I, I don't need to, to, to tell you if you have questions I can uh, explain you later because of the time so, and uh, this Sensebox is the origin of the startup Re-Edu that won uh, last year our Startups Connected Award in the category for German startups in Brazil. So, Uni Potsdam. Uni Potsdam has uh, a lot of uh, offers in this area, uh, in these topics. They are, but uh, they have a, a, a strong area of an environmental systems. This is a very large and complex area. Uh, so you, you will see they, they work together with many uh, non-university uh, organizations, research uh, institutions in, around Germany. Uh, so it's very strong uh, in the area of geoscience and so on. And they they have many options to study a bachelor and master. So some master uh, courses uh, in English as well. And offer the university offers as well uh, many summer schools to these topics. So in Kiel, in the University of Kiel, uh, the main uh, research point is uh, marine science. They have uh, a very strong focus on this area. Uh, Kyo is uh, on FC, no, and uh, in North Germany, and it's a very interesting uh, place. So, and you will find there as well many offers uh, for master studies, and they were uh, recently selected as an in the project of a European university. European universities are uh, consortia 
of uh, European of many uh, universities from many European countries, and this one that uh, with Calkill is a is a project is a consortium consortium in the area of marine science. It sounds logic. So in München, uh, in Munich, Muniki, you have two universities, the Ludwig Maximilian University. The the focus there is in on, on uh, human geography, environmental systems, sustainability, geoscience as well. And you can check as well the Raquel Raquel Carson Center for Environment and Society. So they work there together with questions about uh, environment and society. So the human geography, people, and uh, climate and environment, and so on. So TUM is the Technical University of Munich, and that uh, the focus is more uh, technical. So you can see here eco eco climatology, land surface atmosphere interactions. In this area, they have a project in Amazonia, so the Amazon phase, where they uh, are researching. Um, so the application of CO2 uh, in the how, how the, the forest can react to, to CO2 as one uh, and so and so on. So you see here hydraulic and water resources engineering uh, with the project the nexus of water, food and energy, and they offer a bachelor, master in English, and then have a strong program uh, for startups as well. Next one, so to found uh, startups in the university. Here are three offers not from universities, Leibniz Association. Uh, they have, uh, the, the Leibniz Association has a very important uh, research institute in this area, the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, PIC. So this is really a very important uh, uh, research institute in Germany for decision as well in the area of climate politics. And you will find uh, many offers as well at uh, the Leibniz Research Alliance Energy Transition. If you are interested for energy, there are a lot of uh, focus in this uh, alliance. And uh, so Climapolis Laboratory, is this uh, project that Nico Cautobiano, uh, that Nico is uh, coordinating. This is a pr initiative from the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in Hamburg and uh, USP in Sao Paulo, but they have many, many research institutions from Brazil and from Germany. I know uh, UFRN in Natal, uh, Rio, Minas Gerais, also many, many universities from Brazil uh, take part in this laboratory. And DFG, DFG is a funding organization for research projects, not for uh, scholarships, but for research projects. And uh, But you can do a PhD, for example, in these research groups. They asked me to to address you this uh, both uh, research centers with impact that discuss the research impacts of climate change in biodiversity. So the Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research in the universities of Halle, Wittenberg, Jena, and Leipzig in the UFZ, and uh, also in in Leipzig. And the research unit respect environmental changes in biodiversity hotspot ecosystem of self Ecuador response and feedback effects in marble roof a long longer name yes I think next one <clears throat> so here a very important so um, our kennels how you can follow us and know uh, just in time about offers, new offers, fellowships, uh, scholarships, and so on. So our website, our 
Facebook pay, fan page and LinkedIn. And uh, I recommend you to sign our newsletter. Uh, uh, maybe sign newsletter nowadays is old fashioned, but uh, is a secure way uh, to have the information direct from us uh, without to wait that uh, the algorithm uh, from Facebook or LinkedIn offer you our posts. Okay, next one I think is finished. There are our contacts uh, in at the, the VH, so phone, uh, email, and so on. So I thank you very much, and so sorry that uh, wow I spoke double so long. Okay, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I myself have had already the opportunity to be in an event organizer uh, in partnership with the VH. I strongly recommend who can follow their events so you have the opportunity to hear and talk with all those organizations, all these networks, strong network that the VH has. And so uh, Marcio is representing the VEHA in Sao Paulo, but uh, as you could see, they are also in other countries. So if you are not in Brazil, I'm sure like you can find also other activities from the VEHA in other countries. But uh, I strongly recommend everyone to follow their, their uh, activities and sign their newsletter. Uh, so and I'm going for our next speaker. So we have Miguel. So Miguel, he is biologist and coordinator of the post-degree programs uh, uh, from the AD in Brazil. So the AD, for who doesn't know, I think is one of the yes. biggest agencies, right, Miguel, is sponsoring, uh, researching and studying and scholarships in Germany. So uh, Miguel, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot thank you so that much I can, to be that here. I'm able to re represent um, today um, our. And uh, our company, like now, not company, exchange service um, around the world from the DID. Um, yeah, maybe we can uh, already uh, get the presentation. I will re I represent today um, the DID, uh, which is an exchange service all over the world, and I will give like a quick overview about the DID um, because we are um, already. In, it's already working. Ah, no, awesome. Um, so in general, um, today I will re re uh, represent our programs, which uh, have to do uh, like a lot of with the, um, with the um, political agenda and also climate agenda. So um, I will, I have like some programs in general. Um, uh, the next slide, please. <laughs> So in general, what is the DID? Um, it's a non-profit uh, association who assemble like 241 inst institutes of German higher education. And our objective is um, in general to promote internationalization of institutes of the German higher education. So also, uh, which is a real important point for, for us, is um, for the corporations in all academic levels and all scientific areas all over the world. Because we want to establish um, more corporations, we want to um, have more in, interchange, uh, more exchange with um, with the scientists and the, the students all over the world. Um, the next slide, please. <laughs> um, so, um, like uh, today, actually, we received the new numbers, um, the new numbers from our um, from our exchanges. Um, so we can say actually like um, one will 1.5 million people who already were um, financed from from the DRD for, uh, Germans who went for uh, other countries all over the world and today nowadays also we can say we have more than 1 million uh, finance foreigners uh, which went to uh, to Germany to to institute uh, institutes of research or to uh, to study in general, uh, like at the universities, at the faculties, and everything. Um, also, which is really important to say, we are, um, also artists from um, Germany and other countries are supported. Um, like if they have like an academic um, uh, connection, it is also possible uh, via the DRD to uh, go all over the world. And um, the next slide, please. So now I'm giving you like a um, general overview of the scholarships of the DRD Brazil, 
of course there are a lot of more um, programs from the DRD um, in Germany and uh, there are other programs other institutes and but in general from the DRD Brazil we have like in the area of graduation post-graduation PhD uh, the winter course uh, the winter course is for all the three um, uh, levels um, levels of um, academic uh, levels also it is possible to do a winter course um, unfortunately, this year uh, we we couldn't um, support the winter course because uh, because of the pandemic of COVID nineteen. But uh, we are planning to get uh, to next year um, that we have a new a new scholarship um, for the winter course. Um, talking about the post graduation, uh, which uh, we will also represent the development related post graduate courses, the EPOS. I will talk about this more and also about the Helmut Schmidt um, for public policy and good governance. Um, besides this, uh, maybe it's not um, it's not interesting here, but in general we also have masters and um, speci specializations uh, in the area of architecture, music, performing arts, fine arts, design, visual communication. The PhDs is still really um, interesting also for here because um, the PhD uh, we don't have any restrictions of the fields um, for with uh, fields of scientific fields so everybody can um, can candidate and have their own project for PhD and go to Germany actually from Brazil. Um, the next slide, please. Okay. Um, so the next slide is about APOS. Um, it's a development related postgraduate course. In general, we have the master uh, in between 12 to 24 um, months in a lot of uh, different fields, but I will um, talk about this a little bit later on the next slide. Um, the PhD also we have like uh, from 36 to 38 uh, months in different areas also. And in here we have um, a list of different courses um, because uh, we have uh, different corporations. Um, we also want to support a lot like the areas from the sustainability, sustainability. <laughs> and, and also uh, like the, for the most, it will be really interesting. What benefits do you have for, from the DID? You will have a monthly payment for master from 861 euros. For PhD, it will be 1,200 euros um, for it's a month, the monthly payment. Also, we always have the travel allowance, which will be 1,575 euros. And the insurance cover, because um, in Germany, we need, we need an insurance cover, because uh, without it, you can't, you can't even go study. And um, it's, it's a law, actually. So we also covered this. And we are in this. Um, we have uh, at this scholarship also. We have like prep uh, preparatory uh, preparatory German course, which will be like two, four, or six months. Um, the duration will be decided actually uh, in the process of the selection. So you uh, the the people will um, always um, get the, the course which they will need. And uh, light on the right. On the right side, uh, on the down top, um, we have also the link where you can access like all the informations and also like um, the the uh, the um, the call the call for the scholarship also. Um, next slide, please. We are still um, at APOS um, because I want I want to talk also like about the requirements because um, the people need gra uh, gra and graduation in the field. Excellent academic performance. Excellent academic performing will be um, more or less because the people are asking a lot of times um, this. Um, it will be when we when we say we have uh, ten points, it will be eight point zero. Um, the professional experience is really really important in, in this program because um, this program is especially for um, for um, young adults um, who have already a professional experience and they would want to learn more. And so they can go to Germany to um, get more knowledge, so they can study further, and um, to get to know more about the areas also, like in Germany. In general, uh, always we will need the knowledge of English or German, of course. Um, so we also recommend always um, to um, to have uh, certificates, um, like international certificates of English or German. And also, you should always watch, uh, like, um, for the uni universities and the courses, because 
every university, every course has like a different um, different levels which they want uh, for for the studies. Sometimes it's only English, sometimes it's only German, but also can be a mixture. Um, the description of the u universities and the um, and uh, the list of the courses in general you can find on our site uh, on the link which you which you could see like uh, at the on the site for, um, um, before. Um, now we will continue to the next slide and we will talk about the Helmut Schmidt right now. Uh, the Helmut Schmidt are masters for public policy and good governments. They really, um, they have a real high reputation. So we are, and also there's like actually, um, there's, um, there's the, the concurrency is about around the world because it's a program um, for all the world. Um, so in general, but there are always Brazilians also who go with the, uh, the Helmut Schmidt to Germany to, to participate at these courses. Right now we have eight different courses, uh, which you can also see on our site, uh, on our website. The masters are, um, they are in between 12 and 24 months, like a general master or like a uh, specialization. So in general, like the monthly payment is the same for a master, 861 euros, uh, travel allowance also the same. Preparatory German course is here uh, mandatory. So you have to go six months for, for learning uh, German before before the scholarship starts. Um, it's really important like the German language also like for the normal day life in Germany and also like for the, the life at the German university. So we always, always recommend to um, realize these courses because also like even when you're already at the university, we always um, recommend to continue um, to learn German. Um, next slide, please. So <clears throat> on the next slide also we have like um, the requirements, the fields like um, also um, on EPOS. But here we have like a new point at the requirements because uh, which is really important for the EPOS, uh, it's a social and political a engagement. So the people already have to be um, working on projects or like they have to show that they're already like um, they're really political or social um, active because um, this is like um, a scholarship for the public policy and the God governance. So um, the people have to show already like this um, motivation and, and this is really important. On the, on the right uh, down button, you can also see um, the, the link uh, to go to this, um, to go to this uh, scholarship. So if you're interested, just enter this link um, and after this also it will be possible to ask some questions. Um, next slide, please. So, in general, I will only represent real uh, fast um, <laughs> the, the, the scholarships for, the, uh, for doctor, doctoral programs in Germany. In general, we have uh, three different um, um, mod modules, like the doctoral program, binational supervised doctoral uh, degree, and the binational supervised degree with Cot Hotel. I'm only going to say here, um, if you're going to apply here, um, we have um, there always there's a possibility that you can gain a, a scholarship from the campus or from DRD. But it's really important to um, to say also, um, this is only like um, the, the selection process is together. But after this, the, um, the, all the finance, uh, financial financial benefits are separated. So if you you can gain only one from DRD or from the campus. The monthly payment is here 1,200 euros. In general, uh, there's like the same benefits as always. And um, also, which is really important, there are a lot of more benefits actually. So if you want to want to get to know more about the other benefits, for example, for cities with um, high costs um, or like for, um, um, for couples who are married, also like their benefits. Um, the next slide. I'm only going to show it now really quickly um, uh, the, the different um, modules because here we have the doctor program from three to four years and also like um, the binationally which differs from seven to 12 months or from 12 to 24 months. There are two different um, modules which you can't see right now here but uh, in general there's another um, scholarship. The could to tell also is like a real good option because um, you will gain like two um, diplomas. 
and um, it's really um, but you have to always always have like uh, in the beginning already like um, a cooperation between the between the universities so you have to show the motivation um, and to work out like these uh, corporations um, that's it uh, yeah just last slide uh, in general so if you have uh, questions always you can always write me at info at dr.org.br and you can also follow us on Facebook DRD Brazil and um, I always recommend to subscribe to our newsletter because always when we have like new programs or new um, in general new stuff we will post it uh, like on Facebook and we will send it via newsletter thanks a lot for the attention I hope I didn't uh, was taking too much time, and that's it. Thank you a lot. <laughs>
and not only in meetings and conferences, but also in summer schools, in webinars and podcasts. I took every opportunity that I could. And just briefly mentioning my my experience in this city, my more on a personal side. Uh, as my host was in Wuppertal, a, a city quite small uh, compared to São Paulo, but uh, with a population of almost three fifty. 350,000. I decided to live there. And I think at the end it was a great decision because then I could get in touch with the German culture and I could also practice the language that is really hard in the beginning. But uh, it is nice to, to be in a small city because then you can actually experience the culture. I think that is my, my main point here. And also because I could go to work walking and have more free time after work. So it was it was great. And talk about a bit about my host institution. So in my opinion, Wuppertal Institute to me was the perfect choice because as I I, I wasn't uh, from the private, from the academic area, uh, I didn't want like a strict academic environment. So I found uh, a research institute, like a think tank, as they call themselves, that they was working with the most diverse range of topics worldwide. So to me, it was perfect. And the relation with the host was more like a guidance and mentorship and less of supervision of my daily work and research, right? So from time to time, I, I had short meetings with my host to keep him updated on my work and all the professional experience I was having outside the institute, but uh, the work was very independent most of the time. Right, so I could do my routine on my own pace. It was uh, quite nice. Um, and about my project, as I don't have much time, I, I, I I'm just going to talk briefly. My project uh, uh, was about applying circular economy principles in foreign foreign forest landscape restoration uh, to design out deforestation in Brazilian biomes. So I'm not going into the technical details, but the goal of my research, I wanted to develop uh, some framework or some guidelines for the private sector to address the forest risk commodity supply chains and how to apply circularity as an adaptation and a governance tool. Uh, in this forest sector and also related to environmental services, but at the same time, thriving communities uh, in the, the grassroots communities, right? Uh, and I could see like working in companies that was part of several initiatives, coalitions and alliances. And it, the common issue was that uh, it was the lack of action plans to be implemented in those communities. So it was a, a really um, important topic. So I decided to develop this framework for moving out from a linear model for ecosystem degradation to a circular model for ecosystems restoration. And my project development happened according to the expected timeline. Uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, my research was independent from the projects in the Institute. So uh, I could do on, uh, my own uh, time. So I decided to apply for the extension because we have the option for to extend for three months. And I decided to apply because I really wanted to work with three more important topics that I, I found that it was crucial for my methodology. So I applied and I got the extension for three more months and I could finish my, my project. So overall, I accomplished the expected outcomes with minor adjustments from my research proposal. Uh, so as I don't have much time, that's it from my side now. I just, uh, I can say that I had an amazing experience. I'm still having, but not uh, as a fellow anymore now. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions or talk more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. And yes, yeah, so as Adriana said, so we are going to open for questions uh, after our presentation. So if uh, someone have a question for them, you can already start to, to post that in the comments on YouTube, and then we are going to pick uh, the questions. So, but uh, I think one thing that you already realized from this uh, Alexander von Humboldt Foundation opportunities is that you have some kind of flexibility 
to, to change or to want to do a little bit more uh, in your project. Uh, so that is really, really interesting. So I myself, uh, I am a, a German Chancellor Fellow uh, from 2015 and 16, and it's a really a nice opportunity. So, and that's why I'm really happy to have Elise here. And now as a German Chancellor Fellow, but we know each other for quite some time, uh, working with a climate change uh, mobilization agenda in Brazil and abroad. So I'm really happy to have you here, Alice. Uh, thank you so much. So, and then uh, we, I want you to tell a little bit about uh, your experiences. Uh, so you are still moving to, to Germany uh, soon. Uh, but uh, so how was like the application process, find a host and what is your project? Because German Chancellor Fellowship, basically you can propose any kind of topic you can imagine. But uh, Alice works on the topic of climate change for such a long time. Uh, and, and then I think she can share with us what she's going to be doing in Germany as a German Chancellor. Thank you. Hey, Evelyn. Hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for the invitation. I wish I had seen a webinar like this about a year or two ago. So congratulations on taking the lead on this. Uh, well, I, I thought of sharing with you using these five minutes with uh, dividing three main topics. One is why have I chosen the chancellor, the Humboldt chancellor? Second, what have I learned in this process of the application, which is quite recent for me? And third, uh, to tell a little, little bit about my project. So first, why chancellor? Uh, more or less because of the same reasons of, that Adriana just mentioned. I also wanted to do some research. I'm not, I, I have a master's degree uh, in political economy. I want to actually pursue a, a climate a PhD at some point in the future, but not right now. So I was looking for an opportunity where I could develop a research project that would help me uh, organizing theoretically in practical terms uh, the subject of my work, but not with the so strict Methodol methodological aspects or so strict timelines as in a master's or in a PhD. Uh, and so I found the Chancellor uh, Humboldt Fellowship a very, per the perfect actually opportunity for this. Uh, and also because uh, it showed me the a wide and varied uh, network of people uh, that already belong to the chancellor, such as Evelyn, uh, that I found very interesting people that could also help me uh, developing more the interdisciplinarity of the climate agenda. Uh, because sometimes we are very much focused on only in climate, in environmental issues. Uh, but I personally strongly believe that we need to think much broader in terms of the institutional aspects or political aspects. So I thought that the German fellows are would be a very good place to find other people that these connections would be helpful for my own experience. Um, what have I learned uh, in this uh, or more than a, almost a year now uh, process. Uh, first thing is that the chancellor and the climate protection uh, programs are quite different, but in the end of the day, uh, you have a reasonable space to propose a climate project in the chancellor uh, fellowship. This was a doubt I had in the past. I assume many people would also have the same doubt. So I think go for it because it's possible. Uh, you won't find, especially looking at the Brazilian uh, past fellows, many uh, uh, examples of people researching climate, but you do have a space for that. Um, the second uh, lesson I had from this application uh, process was to plan and find our host well in advance. Uh, I. First, because in Germany, you have so many options of possible, unless you have a very clear goal or task, uh, you can easily get lost of all options of climate institutions uh, that there are in, in Germany and in specifically in Berlin, where I would be based. Uh, so, and I, my experience with my host was excellent uh, in terms of the speed of the process. 
but at the same time, I think uh, give some time for you to decide exactly where and which kind of institution you would like to, to have as a host. Uh, and third and lastly, um, the application uh, showed me uh, that uh, we worried too much about the details of the project in advance when actually, if you look at the chancellor profile, they're much more interested uh, in what you want to achieve with that than actually on exactly what you're going to do uh, in the each month or in each detail. So, of course, having a good plan, it's helpful and it's important even to clarify your ideas, but it's, you should not worry too much on this. It's think much more, focus much more on the purpose. Uh, and so, I, I, of course, I'm happy to answer any specific questions in the end. So telling a little bit about my project. Uh, my host will be the Deutsche Bundestag, so the German parliament. I'll be based in the one uh, parliamentarian's um, MP, the Lisa Badun is her name. She is uh, the climate speaker for the Green Party. Um, I met her... Uh, two years ago when I went to Germany for work and, and we have some connections uh, since then. So uh, she accepted me. I, have never, I haven't seen anyone uh, being based in the Bundestag, but there are many other chancellor fellows that were based, for instance, in a ministry or in a, um, some kind of uh, institution from the government. Uh, but so she, my host will be there. So I'll be based in the Bundestag my goal with the project is to do some research on parliamentarian engagement on climate issues. Uh, why? Because this is part of what I have been doing a lot in Brazil in the past years, but I have never really had the opportunity to go deeper into this. So I, instead of, for instance, staying in a university or in a think tank, I wanted to leave the experience there to see how they behave, to see how the climate agenda is uh, dealt by different uh, parliamentarians. What is the level of appropriation of the agenda? Uh, and also think about uh, how NGOs uh, and other stakeholders uh, engage with parliamentarians to talk about climate issues. So in the end of, I, I wish to have a kind of basis for comparison with my practical experience uh, here in Brazil uh, and maybe uh, publish something uh, that is relevant to advance this agenda, both in Germany and in Brazil. Uh, I think it's this. I hope this is helpful. And once again, thanks more. Thanks a lot, Arlene. Thank you, Elise. It's really nice to have you here. Uh, so, and then we are going to our last speaker before we open for questions. And I, I'm quite sure that uh, who, who are from Brazil watching the, this, uh, a webinar, I'm quite sure they know Carlos Hiteo, like Carlos is one of uh, uh, main reference for us and someone advocated uh, for climate change policies in Brazil. And so it's really nice to have you here, Carlos. Uh, but for who doesn't know, Carlos is not in Climate Change Observatory of Brazil anymore. Uh, so Carlos is an environmentalist and now he's a senior fellow from the Institute for Advanced uh, Sustainability Studies in Potsdam, uh, close to Berlin. So last year during the uh, YCL immersion in Germany, we had the opportunity to visit the ISS uh, and it was really nice. Uh, like they are doing like a, a huge uh, work related with sustainability and climate change. So then Carlos can share a little bit uh, what they are doing there and maybe how people can apply because recently they, I think they advertised some positions there, right? Uh, yes, well, first of all, thank you very much, Evelyn, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to speak with uh, those who are watching us, and uh, also it is a pleasure to share this panel with, uh, with so, so many uh, fantastic people, and I'm glad that uh, Alicia uh, will, will be soon moving to Germany, and, uh, uh, and the conversation that we, we used to have here, we all, uh, many of us will be able to have uh, uh, there in Germany. Uh, well, uh, I briefly speak about myself. Um, I'm, I've done my, my master and my PhD in, in, in ecology or biological science at the, at the National Institute for Amazonian Research. 
I finished my, my PhD in 2003 and then I, I immediately left the uh, uh, my PhD, uh, and even before finishing my PhD, I, I've, I've joined the Greenpeace Brazil to work for two years, two and a half years for the Amazon campaign, and later to start building the, the climate campaign for Greenpeace in Brazil. This is, was back in 2005. And since then, uh, I have been working for different um, civil society organizations. For one year, I have been, um, I, I was uh, a climate uh, attache for the, the Br uh, British Embassy uh in brasilia the capital of brazil working um, it was uh, between 20 2008 and 2009 a very intense year on climate talks we would have a big uh, conference at cop uh, 15 uh in copenhagen that was expected where it was expected that the the new big global climate pact was agreed what happened in, in 2015 uh, at that time in 2009 the COP15 it was expected a new uh, global climate uh, deal a new global climate agreement under the UNFCCC uh, processes process well uh, and so since I left the 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 uh my my studies and it was a, a very intense period uh, of time between 1996 and 2003 uh, my master and my phd uh, period terms uh i I've, I've i've been working a lot on policy and advocacy and on promoting the, the climate agenda and trying to to help the national debate for the progress of climate agenda in the country, uh, especially, especially from the point of view of public policies. And, uh, and so I, I worked for Greenpeace and later on between 2009 and 2013, I, I've led the WWF Brazil Climate and Energy Program. And I, I left uh, in October 2013, I've joined the uh, Climate Observatory, which is a network comprising now 50 different organizations in Brazil. Uh, uh, as its uh, executive secretary, and uh, I stayed there for six and a half years. It was a very intense period of time. We have done several uh, interesting um, works and, um, and produced a lot of data on greenhouse gas emissions for Brazil. And uh, we we developed uh, the proposal for br the Brazilian commitments under the what would be so the the the, the Paris Agreement based on uh, on an analysis of uh, of uh, fair share of uh, mitigation effort and so this was uh, ha very helpful to frame the debate around the uh, what would be the should be the nature and the, the level of ambition of brazilian uh, climate targets but it was a, a, a long journey working for the for the civil society groups and organizations and last year what um, um, uh, was a, a key factor to to uh, for me to to think about doing something different was uh, when the there was a, the uh, the trade agreement signed between European Union and Mercosur uh, th that included a, a, a whole chapter on trade and sustainable development um, I thought it was a, it was in, it would be interesting to investigate more to do a, a more uh, uh, focused uh, research and analysis on the effectiveness of that uh, that uh, uh, deal, uh, specifically on on its uh, trade and sustainability uh, sustainable development chapter, because the the, the deal was signed uh, with uh, a, a group of countries between the EU and a group of countries including that included Brazil that is doing exactly the opposite right now we are moving in absolutely di different direction than than what is the commitments that are expected from countries to deliver to be delivered under the, the this trade deal which is uh, includes the implementation of um, the national implementation of the Paris agreement uh, no setback in environmental legislation, respect to indigenous people's rights, and participation of civil society organizations in the implementation of the agreement. Well, we are not there exactly in Brazil. So I thought it was an opportunity. At that time, uh, it was in June, I guess in June or July, the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies opened 
uh, its annual uh, call for applications for uh, new fellows. And uh, the Institute itself, it's very interesting because it works in the interface uh, between uh, research and public policy. And I think it was, uh, uh, I thought that it was a, a very interesting opportunity to, uh, for a while, to, to refresh my mind and to, to have uh, a, a appropriate time to dive into the, 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 uh, this trade deal, which is the subject of my, my research at the, in the Institute, and to, uh, by developing some research, to the, develop uh, not only an analysis, but bring some recommendations for the process of the implementation of the agreement. And Germany plays a very important role among the EU countries. It's a very important partner from Brazil on, on, on environment and sustainable development areas in other areas as, areas as well. It's very important uh, trade partners for, for, for Brazil. It's many companies, German companies are really interesting to sell, for example, cars for Brazil, while Germany and other EU countries would import beef and uh, food products from Brazil. And, uh, and Germany is taking the lead of the EU Commission now. Uh, and so it was uh, the timing was perfect and the, the call was very interesting. And something else was uh, um, really interesting from, uh, for me uh, uh, related to the IASS. They have a very diverse group of uh, uh, researchers and they have a very diverse group of fellows uh, bringing from absolutely different areas. Not only uh, they, they, they uh, attract people that uh, have a, a full ac academic background and um, work on research institutes and universities, but uh, they also uh, try to attract people from other sectors, from civil society, from uh, arts. And we have a dancer, which is a fellow, uh, from the institute there right now. We have an artist or two artists that are also fellows from the institute. And so this uh, 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 variety and richness of, um, of possibilities and of uh, possibilities of exchange was also very interesting for me that I have been for so many time focusing so much on the, the climate agenda that I, I felt uh, the, necess the necessity to uh, to open my mind and to, to be in touch in an absolutely different environment from the civil society world in Brazil. Uh, but also thinking about uh, contributing to the, 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 the national agenda in the country. And um, the good news is that uh, IASS is uh, open, uh, opened a call for applications for new fellows and they have, a, uh, they opened the opportunity for fellows from different levels, from senior uh, to junior fellows. And as I said, from different areas, so there are people coming from private sector as well. Um, some people working and developing some work with the startups related to sustainability solutions. And uh, there are more uh, some people do, developing a very academic research, a very uh, specific research in, on, on sustainability and, uh, and, and how sustainability is uh, even teached among uh, German uh, institutions and how can uh, sustainability uh, learning be uh, have progress and i think this is a, was a, a very helpful one with the decision to leave it a position i could do uh, the job that i was doing for many years uh, i would be happy to be uh, contributing a uh, uh, civil society but uh, uh, as part of brazilian civil society but uh, i thought it was the right timing for me to to do something else and then and, and being uh, coming back to the uh, academic but not only academic uh, uh, think tank you know, working this interface between um, uh, uh, research and public policies would be the best case for me and uh, uh, the good news as I said was is that uh, the, the applications are open at the, the, the Institute but um, uh, there are only nine or uh, ten days left for the applications, but uh, the process is, is smooth, I would say. Uh, they require uh, not, uh, you don't need in, uh, necessarily uh, a, um, a mentor that will host you there. Uh, 
You just need to identify the connection between, between your ideas or the ideas of your research and the research areas from the Institute. And uh, they have uh, many of them are just to tell you a very, uh, uh, in, in very general terms, they have a, a, group, a research group on democratic transformation, another one on systemic in the interdependence dependencies, nature, technology, society, on perceptions, values, and orientation, energy systems, and so societal change, and uh, uh, on governance for environment and society. And so it's very broad, it's very open, and um, there's a need of a connection between uh, uh, you of course, it's necessary to, to have a, a, a strong connection with the sustainability. And, um, and the process, I would say, it's smooth. It's not very complex in terms of the, the application, the forms, uh, the format is, is one doc document only with a, a letter of uh, introduction, uh, a letter of presentation, and, and uh, um, um, the, the CV of the person and the, the description of the, the, the proposed research the, uh, with spe some specific topics that are informed in the, in the application process. That's basically that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. So as everyone can see, there are a lot of options, a lot of ways. I think this presentation show uh, many, many ways and many options uh, and can show how climate change is a topic that is very wide, like we can work so in different areas, in different sectors. Uh, it's not just about being an NGO or in more the politics, but there are a lot of opportunities as you could see in, uh, in all the presentations. So I hope you can use that a lot. So now I'm going to open for questions. And we already have one question here from Ana Carolina, specifically for uh, Miguel, uh, Miguel Flores. And then she say, my question is directed to Flores. They, that they are the public policy master. Has any specialization related to climate policy? Well, this depends actually on the universities because um, at Orbis, um the courses are different. We have in general, like um, at the Willy Brandt Schule, um, uh, a course which is uh, from the public policy. But also there's, um, I think it's always important to see the uh, profile of every course because there are always like some parts, um, and also it's like it's it, it's in, inside of the decision of the student itself, if um, if she wants to get more to this area or the other area. But in general, we also recommend to see also with the university and, and directly because, like the courses, um, they are really different from every university and also like from the all the courses from Helmut Schmidt. Um, so thank you, Miguel. So uh, we still have no no other uh, questions yet. So I'm uh, waiting for a little bit more questions. Uh, so, but uh, uh, no, now there is Pedro. Now, just because I say there's no, so people start to, to put. <laughs> but uh, Pedro uh, has a question to Carlos. I'm going to show here. So he said, I would like to ask Carlos how advanced how advanced must be the research project to apply to the EISS? It is only five pages. Uh, um, last year it was uh, five pages, around five pages, but um, uh, it said uh, doesn't need to be a very long uh, and uh, um, a proposal. Uh, I, I, I've, I've shared with Evelyn the, the call for applications, or the, the link for the, the call uh, for applications. So let me just check here or if there is something specific. Well, the, I will uh, describe what's uh, in, in the, at the link, what is necessary, a letter of motivation, a CV uh, the, with the three pages of, uh, maximum, uh, a list of publications, projects, and lectures or similar that uh, could, could be added uh, uh, if um, the, the candidate wants to submit it uh, together with the proposal, 
And a proposal that uh, the project outline had, uh, needs to have a maximum of 300 words. Uh, and um, you need to, to include, as I said, uh, the, the, the potential interface between the proposed research and the research areas of the Institute. A, a short, a brief description of the activities and, uh, and how these activities might uh, contribute to the, the work and the mission of the IASS. And um, um, other information, uh, let, let me see. Well, they don't speak here specifically on how many pages should be the the, 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 the whole pro uh, project, but uh, it's not a long project. Uh, it's, uh, I, if I'm not wrong, my, my full document was nine pages, including the letter of motivation and my CV. Nice. Uh, thank you, Carlos. And uh, now uh, we already have another question again to Miguel Flores, because uh, I think the AD is so huge in terms of uh, funding opportunities. Uh, so uh, Luis Fernando is asking uh, about the two years experience. We got to have to apply for the, the AD scholarship. Do they need it to be in the same area, area of the master's degree? Normally, they have to be like in the same area because also we want uh, that the people have um, already like they're collecting um, in this area like the experience and also like um, the graduation like the bachelor have to be also from the same area because we want to to profound like the knowledge of the areas and um, we want to work further with the, with the young professionals. So uh, thank you, Miguel. And so while we don't have any other question, uh, I would like he, all of you uh, from your experience, because all of you had experiences in Germany or with German projects, uh, about the language. A lot of people uh, search me uh, asking, oh, is, is there, it makes some difference if I already know German. So when I, in the time of the application, is it helpful while I'm living in Germany? So, would what, from your opinion? So, what what do you think uh, about uh, having already the German uh, language knowledge to to go to study or research in Germany? So, Carlos, Adrian, okay. well, um, very briefly, the the application for IASS is. Uh, fully in English, uh, even the documents needs to be submitted in English and then German speaking language is not a requirement uh, um, uh, there. Uh, it's, uh, since they have uh, many international um, co collaborators and fellows, uh, it's not necessary, uh, especially because it's a, a one year uh, you go there in theory, in the beginning of your term, in the follow program term, uh, and um, it's not necessary uh, to, to, to be to speak German. And um, um, it seems to be not an uh, also, uh, let's say, a criteria that be, that will be considered in the application process. Adriana, do you want to say? And then Marcia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for the the homeboat, uh, at least for my fellowship, the the climate protection one, uh, it's not a requirement as well. But a really nice thing thing is that the foundation supports you to to do it for two months. They invite you to come before your time here uh, to research, to come and study for two months. Uh, they encourage you to keep uh, <laughs> to keep learning German. Uh, I think they support you for a couple of more times after the two months, so it's really nice. And uh, for some cities, as uh, was my case, it's, if it's too small, you really need the German in a daily basis. So it's nice at least to learn the basics. I mean, for me, it was uh, it was crucial <laughs> to to talk at least uh, with uh, in the supermarkets and stuff. But uh, yeah, in my experience, I also encourage you to learn. It's not easy in the beginning, but uh, yeah, once you have the basic, I think nice. you manage so, the and rest. Marcio, I think you really want to comment because you live it for 
many years in Germany, right? <laughs> uh, what is your hint? Yes, so uh, as Carlos said, and Adriana as well, so uh, to, to learn English is not a requirement uh, for our research in Germany. Uh, so English is in many, in many uh, research institutes, the official language or the work language in the institutes. Uh, and uh, the team are very internalized, I hope. Um, yes, okay. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I, so we recommend uh, to learn German, uh, not uh, for for the research necessary. Uh, so it's necessary for some uh, research, for some uh, research in uh, humanities, but uh, not for this area. But uh, so for for many other aspects, for example, the news. Uh, uh, on TV, for example, so, uh, naturally you can follow the news in English, but it is not the same. It's not the same. They follow the news in English normally uh, are from people from foreign countries, and uh, and it's very different to follow the news by German. Uh, this is uh, one point, uh, but I, I need to say that. Uh, uh, to have the, the the level to understand the news uh, on TV, uh, you need uh, some time in Germany. So I need it, uh, but you can read in the newspaper or uh, in internet in German. So uh, as well, it's very important uh, to make uh, to have friends uh, to to integrate in the German society. So this is very important. Uh, it's very different to have only foreign, uh, foreign uh, friends or German friends. So your friend, a German friend in the university will speak with you uh, in English, but uh, other German people outside of the university in the, in the pubs and so on, Biergarten, they, they will need, uh, you need uh, to talk in, in German. Uh, to to order in restaurants, to order to to buy and so on, to go shopping and so on. Uh, that is very important. And and to feel the country, to optimize the experience uh, living uh, abroad, living in Germany. That's very very important. I can only recommend it. And about difficult, uh, so my joke uh, was, uh, I, I say everything, that uh, I was in Germany as journalist and I followed the Bundesliga, for example, and I need to say, uh, Brazilian uh, football uh, players, they learn German. Uh, how academic people cannot learn German? So it's difficult, but you could. You can. Good. Thanks, Marcio. And then, I, I, uh, Alice, do you want to comment on that? Because I know you are learning German right now. So <laughs> <laughs> how is that for you? Yeah, and I will use the opportunity to pick up the question from Malini as well on kids. Because for me, this was something that attracted me to the Humboldt, of the Chancellor opportunity as well uh as as they allow you or they provide you uh the german class i'm confusing already deutsch german ah but anyways so german classes uh before and also for your partner uh and at some point uh there the opportunity for instance in my case i have a three years daughter she will uh go to school and learn uh german there so this is, I think, a, a part, very interesting part of the experience. Although, of course, given the difficulties in learning German, and especially now with the, the COVID issue, we are learning in Zoom. So spending a few hours, I don't know how will that look like in 2000, in the next year. So 
it's it's challenging, but it's a very nice experience. And Aline, just to compliment on this, yes, I think it's not that easy. I mean, especially thinking on the home boat experience, with whatever you have kids, they are welcoming you a lot. So you have support for that in terms of financial support. Um, but you have to take care of everything on your own. So and so uh, even for this, it's important to learn German. You can Google translate everything, but to go through the bureaucracy uh, in German, so it's easier. Sometimes it, you, you avoid yeah, no, some pitfalls. I think Carlos also wanted to comment and then Miguel. Uh, very briefly on, on kids, I have an eight years old boy uh actually i'm not yet in potsdam in germany i'll be there by monday i'll, I'll be moving in three days uh exactly uh but I'm, um, i was supposed to be there earlier this year but due to the, pand the pandemics i couldn't and i was expected to be there searching for a school for my my boy at this time and uh, what happened along these last months was that he he's studying uh, German online with a, with a teacher, uh, individual teacher, uh, to so he he to at least get used to the language, and especially uh, because kids have their full hard drive empty, <laughs> full of space. It's uh, easy to learn. Uh, but at least he's learning a bit. So uh, whenever we we uh, we have him enrolled in any school, he would be used uh, at least to 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 listening uh, in Germany. And of course, uh, I'll take him every time I go to the supermarket, so he 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 will help me to, to buy the the right things before I learn, because uh, my my learning process for sure will be much more <laughs> much slower. So, and then Miguel also wants to comment because he already said before, right? They, are, they I think, have extra uh, so financial support for people going family, right? So, I can't um, tell, like, a lot about learning German because I was born and raised in Germany. So, for me, it was difficult to learn Portuguese and I'm still learning. Um, but in general, I can say for the DRD um, that we have, like, always, like, um, courses, preparatory courses, um, for German and we always recommend to, um, to realize these courses and also like uh, they are they are always inside the university the university they are normally like faculties for just languages and you can learn there for free more um, and this it is always like also the possibility for German for uh, internationals and my for example also my international friends uh, they are always were well just like learning um, um, at these um, faculties of, um, of the languages and it always helped a lot, um, like for um, coming back for the kids. Um, for example, like um, inside of the universities, uh, normally they have some stuff like um, like kindergartens, and they also care about um, the kids a lot. Um, and when you get like a scholarship from the DRD, um, also we pay more money for the people who have kids because it's also like important for us that the people can um, go with the kids or with their. Um, with um, yeah, with the with their married couple, so they can um, get um, get their partner also to Germany. So thank you, Miguel. And so now I'm going to for the last question. That are two questions from Larissa and Mariana, but they are very similar. Uh, so first, uh, we are ready, like we said, it would be one hour, and we are already here for almost one and a half hour. Uh, so thank you so much to to stay with us for all this time. But uh, so Larissa and Mariana, so they are, I think, Miguel, they are very worried with this two years experience here required uh, by the AD. Uh, but uh, Larissa, she did uh, this in, uh, scientific initiation uh, in her university, Unicamp, about uh, sustainability. And Mariana also did the internships, which is quite common in Brazil, right? Like we go for internships while we are yep. uh, in our degrees. So they are asking if those experiences count for the AD as the two years experience. In general, yes, but um, always um, it has to be um, uh, after the bachelor. Um, we can't count like the experience which is collected um, um, besides the bachelor, we can't count like a um, new experience because it's all it's always part of the bachelor already. So um, 
um, unfortunately, we can't count it as, like as um, experience, professional experience. So that's good to know. So from who is uh, willing to apply for they are there. So after finish the degree, two years of experience. Uh, so now we, we are already like uh, so much more uh, beyond the time we, we had promised. So I would like first to thank you all uh, to be here with us. Uh, it was a really uh, nice uh, opportunity for us. So at YCL, we want to do other, uh, YCL talks about that opportunities in other countries as well. Uh, so stay tuned and following us. And I also, I already want to tell that on 24th of November, we are launching our pro, uh, Day of the Climate Professional. So we want to do a 24 hours marathon of online activities for all, all over the world of professionals on the topic of climate change, sharing uh, what, what that means, like uh, what, what it means being a, a climate professional. So for our young people, have an idea that, that there's many, many areas that they, they could work uh, and also uh, be connected with climate change. So if you want to host some activity or if you want to participate in one of our activities, so you are more than welcome. We are going to launch more information on our website soon. But uh, so I want you already to save the date because I'm sure all of you, like our speakers, you are a huge inspiration and you could share with your other youngsters all over the world, uh, what what it means, uh, what, what is uh, the uh, climate professional look like. So then thank you so much. And so I, I'm here in Germany and I'm looking forward to see uh, you all and maybe you can have some coffee if you are in Hamburg area. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, thanks. Bye. 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 Thank, thank you. Thanks a lot.